So um, example one asks us to graph a logarithmic function. You'll see it's log of x base 2 equals y. And um, we don't know how to evaluate logarithms except for base e and base 10 with our calculator. So what I want to do here to graph a logarithm is I want to rewrite this as an exponential expression. So if I rewrite this in exponential form, if you recall from last week, this number 2 is the base. The logarithm equals the power. So 2 to the y power is equal to x, the argument. If you change from a logarithm into an exponential expression, uh, typically when we graph things, we pick x to solve for y, right? We make the independent variable x, we pick anything we want to for x. Um, back in um, earlier in the chapter, we were graphing exponential functions, if you recall, I think 6-1 six, is six when we did that. It would have said y equals 2 to the x power. That's what we would have graphed. And I told you to pick negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 for the power. Well, here, the power is y. So where I usually have an independent variable x to solve for y, now I'm going to have an independent variable y to solve for x. That's the easier way to evaluate this. So I'm going to pick y equals negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So making y independent in this case. And then I'm using the equation here to solve for y. So if y is negative 2, x equals 2 to the negative 2 power, which is 0.25. If you didn't know that, you can use a calculator to evaluate. You can punch in a calculator 2 to the negative 2 power, 0.25. And then 2 to the negative 1 power is 0.5, and so on and so forth. 2 to the 0 power is 1. 2 to the first power is 2. 2 to the second power is 4. Now, if you recall about exponential functions that we did back in 6.1, we had a horizontal asymptote. That was a line that the graph was not allowed to cross. Okay. Um, an exponential function is the inverse of a logarithm. A logarithm is the inverse of an exponential function. So since they're inverses one another, they have similar properties to them, but things change up a little bit. So where the exponential has a horizontal asymptote, the logarithmic that's what we're graphing is going to get a vertical asymptote. All right, so notice here that x over here is getting smaller as we get y negative, and it's getting bigger as we get y positive. All right, so I'm looking at this, and as x, y gets bigger, negative, so if I try this, like y to the negative, so 2 to the negative third power, 2 to the negative fourth power. As I keep making y a bigger negative number, 2 to the negative fifth power, and so on, notice it never gets negative, it just gets smaller, right? 2 to the negative seventh, and so on. So as I keep on making y bigger and bigger negative, x is getting closer and closer and closer to zero, but it's never going to reach zero. So where, again, an exponential function, y equals some number to the x power, has a horizontal asymptote. The exponential function with x equals 2 to the y power is going to get a vertical asymptote. Again, this was created by a logarithmic. So when I get a logarithmic equation, I typically get a vertical asymptote. The asymptote is going to be x equals zero. I always graph the asymptote first so that I know that my boundary, the graph's not going to cross that. Now the points, even though I picked y and solved for x, I'm still plotting x, y coordinates to plot these points. So if I'm plotting this point, 0.25 comma negative 2, that's 1 fourth over 2 down. And this point here, 0.5 comma negative 1, is 1 half over and 1 down. This point here, 1 comma 0, is 1 right, 0 up or down. We have the fourth point is 2 comma 1, 2 right, 1 up. And our final point is 4 comma 2, that's 4 right and 2 up. And those are the points we picked. There's nothing magical about those points, they're just easy to evaluate. Pretty easy to plot. And it creates this shape that we be kind of accustomed to for this exponential has that, that shape here, but this one instead is going up and over instead of down like that. So 
looking at this and connecting the dots here, one side is increasing, the other side is flattening out. So this side is going to stay along the asymptote like so, and this side is going to continue off forever that direction. Now back when we graphed exponentials, we did asymptotes and intercepts and um, end behavior, things like that. For now, I just want you to graph these. Um, we'll get to those types of questions down the road. In your homework assignment in the section where he asked you to graph these, it asked for all that other stuff, I just want you to graph these. There's five of these problems in your homework tonight. We'll just graph the logarithmic function, modify it to an exponential, pick your values for y, solve for x, plot the points, connect the dots. Um, the vertical asymptote tends to be x equals zero unless there's other things acting upon. I think everything in your homework tonight is going to be an x equals zero asymptote. So I don't see the need to keep on listing that every single time. So just for now, graph it. Take your logarithmic, change it exponential, fill out the chart, graph the 